Hey everybody, it's Dave Clark, aka The Pattern Guy. Hey, I promise you we're going to start making some sawdust today, and we will. There's a couple things i got to uh, go over before we get going in that, alright? So, um, we're going to work on the cylinders, uh, just not today. But I still have a split pattern we're going to do. Okay, i got another job in. I'm still waiting for some uh, dimensions from, from Jesse out there, so... Um, that's kind of a little on hold. And this this is the way things go, especially with me. Um, I've got a few customers, um, and some are a little more urgent than others, and that you know. So they're guys that I, I do a lot of work for, so I got to keep those guys going. That and that. So and you know, another thing I do too a lot of times is um, I had a guy approach me. Um, through somebody else, uh, he wants some casings made, all right? So we're gonna see if we can do them. I'm not 100% sure. So anyhow, give me this little brass Y pipe, okay? And uh, he, he wants to know if we can start making some casings on these things. Um, I, we're gonna attempt that the wall thickness is really thin. It's like just, just a little shy of 50 thousandths, you know? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a, um, it's what we're going to do today, okay? I don't know if I'll get it done today, and then, like I said, we'll get it started, and um, i got to get the camera to Joe to, to, to get this on today, so I uh, should have been on yesterday, sorry about that. Uh, happy Easter, you know, too. So what I'm going to teach you guys how to do, we're going to have to, since this is cylindrical, all right, okay, so with this we got to make a split cylindrical pattern just like we're going to do with the um, uh, cylinders for making for painting and I found this down in the, in the basement and this I started to make a set of cylinders at, w at one time too for I believe him I'm not sure but uh, something went wrong with them wrong dimensions or something like that but you know basically what you do is you get you know I had the two pieces of wood all right, that's actually what we're gonna get started with here today, okay? So I got two pieces of wood, all right, that we're gonna make this Y pipe out of, all right? So how we get started with this is, I don't even know where you can get these. These were made for me by somebody, okay? Actually a friend of my dad's. Okay, so it's a split center. We, we actually had these at Precision molding pattern uh, when I was there. So in the lathe, uh, I gotta go over some machine stuff here too. Um, in the lathe, you have the headstock, that's where you put your fixed tooling in there and that's what's gonna drive our piece, okay? And then all the way at the other end, and, and when we go over there, I'll, I'll show you, okay? The other end, we have a tail stock, okay? And in the tail stack, it helps a lot of times. You have two different um, um, tools you can use back in the back end. You can use a live center or a dead center. And it's pretty much self-explanatory. The dead center doesn't move. The live centers have bearings in them. They move with the workpiece. Okay? And that's the preferable method. The, the uh, dead center, especially in wood, what will happen is when, you, when you're putting pressure on the pieces you're turning, it kind of pushes the wood into that dead center and it starts getting off center. We can't have that pattern making wise, okay? It's, you know, if you're making spindles for your staircase or like a piece of furniture or something, if it gets off a little bit, you know, you're not going to notice it. But for pattern making, we cannot have that, okay? It's got to be perfectly and center. We'll, we'll do a little chalk talk even though it's not a chalk talk day. All right, so this is the, the live center. Okay, so like I said, I don't know where, you know, hopefully if uh, you guys got a buddy that's a machinist out there, if you have your own lathe or, you know, lathe and a milling machine, that, that's perfect, you know, uh, start making things up like this because, I mean, you've got to have something like this. Um, it, you know, like I said, we can do the marine thing, overcome and adapt. Um, you know, one of the things I was thinking of the other day, like I said, I'm trying to teach you guys stuff. Um, one of the things you could do, you know, you got your, we're going to make a crude lathe, okay? All right, here's the, here's your tail stock down here. 
let's just say here's your headstock with your spindle okay so what happens um, for guys that don't know anything about wood turning in that right so you have you can do it one of two ways you can you know go in between centers okay and turn cylindrical pieces that's what we're going to be doing today or you could they have a face plate on here okay and then you could turn like bowl shaped pieces or uh you know one of the things i used to do a lot of pump work so i used to make the impellers i used to make the um, hubs for the impeller they call them hubs right so if you don't have these centers one of the things you probably could do is is uh, you know you just say you're looking this way at your faceplate you know you could probably just you know screw a couple pieces of wood here you know be your center you know even distance between centers and then you could probably make up a little block of wood down at the other end you could do it's probably not going to be as accurate but for something like you know if you're just starting out like i said just starting out you could do something like that you know or not so here's what we're going to do is these um these centers actually um they're an inch exactly an inch in between so what we have to do is um <laughs> believe it or not too uh in cutting these pieces out i just cut them out real quick uh you know we'll show you down the road like so we're, we're in this for the long haul hopefully um in doing this i spotted a problem i've never done anything like split this thin before okay so one of the problems that i can foresee with this okay when you do these okay you get these big pieces right so you can see these holes here those are screw holes so i had a screw going through here because what will happen is if you don't screw this together usually i put the pins in there too for my center pins i, I didn't do that this for some reason but anyhow um what will happen is as you're turning the centrifugal force will want to tend to push this open you know it'll hold tight on the back and the front you know the headstock tailstock in the center that'll come open plus when you're putting pressure on it with your tool right so you gotta screw these okay so one of the things were like I said we got to get this down to um, this is five eighths of a, a little under five eighths of an inch thick you know so how am I gonna screw this I, I I'm was baffled so here's what I came up with okay so what we're gonna do is we got our little center piece thing in here okay and we, we got it down here so there's my parting my piece of wood all right you probably can't even see it so I gotta start learning to make these things a little bigger so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn like in, in here and we'll turn in here and then I'll put a screw in the middle and we'll just leave that middle part bigger where I can get a halfway decent sized screw in there. Okay, so I got enough of this. I got enough of this stock. If you can see, you know, we're, uh, you know, I got a lot of stock and I actually cut two sets of these out too, just in case. All right, so one of the things we got to do with this too all right um i started rambling again um this is it's you know it's a prototype i mean we already got the thing it's not really it's not a prototype for se but it's gonna be like a prototype for me because i gotta see if i can cast this i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to cast this so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go ahead and make one pattern real quick and a core box can have a core box to this also and we'll see if we can cast it so if i can cast it down at the foundry what we'll do is we'll use the pattern that we're going to make today and use that as a master okay because when we get into production he, he wants quite a few of these all right so if i can cast them if we get into production of these things I'm going to put as many of these on a match plate as I can, okay, and what I'll do is I'll use what the pattern that we're making today as a master, okay, I'll pour plastic off of it, and if we can do it, I'll show you how to do it, you know, um, and then what we'll do is, um, 
we'll pour plastic off this and I'll make a whole bunch of plastic patterns and we'll mount them on a match plate and it will go from there okay so one of the things we got to do with this these are cord okay so it, it's kind of hard for you guys to see this so basically what this is looking like okay it's uh just a little y pipe oops this would go like that okay so and then you know it's out here those are dotted lines it's a hidden line for for guys that don't know the drawings okay that's telling you there's something inside i'll, I'll try to remember to go over this as we're going all right so then we're gonna have our core print out here we're gonna have a corporate here and out the back side okay so this is the thing I said last week you got to think a couple steps ahead as much as you can when you're doing this stuff so you don't paint yourself in the corner um, you want to paint yourself in the corner plus like I said we always try to you know I mean these are little pieces of wood that's that's not much but you know it's you don't want to waste your wood and all that too okay so we're gonna try to find the most efficient way to turn this okay so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm actually gonna have to turn this outside actually I should have probably done this in a different colors we got different colors but anyhow we got to turn this outside okay and then obviously we're not gonna be able to turn that leg on there so here let's do it this way all right so we're gonna have to turn something that looks like this there we go okay that's a little easier okay so this part here that's going to be the pattern and then these little pieces are going to be the core print okay so i got the main body that would be this piece right here is this piece right so i also got a make another leg like this this is the same diameter as this so what I can do in a corporate is going to be the same diameter so on the same piece of wood what we'll do is we'll turn this corporate diameter a little bit longer and then we'll go wide, wide out again for the size of the pattern okay and then when we're done what we'll do is we'll cut this off here right and then we'll use this piece to put up here okay so yeah think ahead that that'll save us from you know say you just turn this little pattern piece and it's so small right and then i gotta you know go through making these so that they fit in here and that and turn another piece up right so we'll be able to do all this at one time and then use it um as we go okay now as far as like i was saying and i'll say probably 101 thousand times is um when we make core boxes okay uh, like i said my dad back in the old day okay so the core box for this it, it, it's real simple okay um what we're gonna do i probably should have left let's do this again here i'll leave this on all right so that's the shape of our pattern okay the core box is going to look the exact same but instead of having those little steps in them in the pattern okay to get down to your core print so our core print is just or our core print i'm sorry the core stick the core stick is just going to be straight through okay all right so that's this is what the core stick is going to look like so all i got to do is turn one piece that's going to be all the way along it's a little bit bigger than three eighths of an inch right so we'll, we'll go a little extra i'll cut that here and then we'll use this piece to make our leg okay so when i get that done what we'll do is we will like i said i'm probably not going to do this all today because like i got like i got the camera and I don't, I don't know if i'll be able to get it done but so what i'll do is i'll just take a piece of plywood okay and then we'll mount that core stick will look like that and then you'll have the legs sticking out it'll look something like that 
put a frame around it, okay? Fill that full of plastic and we'll have our core box, okay? So it, it's, uh, I'll, I'll try to show as much as we can if we can get stuff done, but that's basically how you have to do it, okay? And um, real quick, I, I wanna, this to me is like one of the in, important aspects of pattern because I like when we were uh, when I worked at uh, Precision Mold Pattern, oh, we did a lot of a lot of cylindrical uh, patterns, and I, you know, it, it just, you know, my dad started teaching me how to use the lathe when I, I mean, I was little, little, like five, literally five years old, I was on the lathe. And uh, so I've been turning for a long time. So when I got to Arrow, I, I got to do a lot of the turning in that there. So I did a lot of turning in it. I, I didn't know everything, obviously. Um, he had an old Italian guy there. He's actually retired and he came back, you know, worked a couple months out of the year. He was phenomenal. So he showed me a bunch of tricks too, you know, so that was pretty cool. But I, I can turn pretty good. So here, I want to show you this. I think it's an, an important part, okay? So just real quick before I get going, showing you how to do this stuff. Um, like when you do something like this, okay, you can see these, like I said, these are an inch, okay? So the piece that I'm gonna be turning smaller than an inch, right? So I just started out with half inch, two half inch thick pieces of wood, okay? And they're gonna go in there and, and sandwich in there, okay? So. This one, obviously, they're, they're thicker, right? So what you have to do is, you can see I got these little ears here. You know, that's where that went on right there, okay? So, you know, it, it's, you know, really easy. It just, you know, you do a piece like this, okay? And, uh, all right, so this will be an inch. And you know that'll be an inch, so you know half inch, half inch on each side. Okay, so one of the most important things when you turn, you get turning, is that you, um, you know, as I'm talking about the end grain in, in that, it's um, you know you're you're going along a whole whole piece cylindrical turning. Okay, but just say. I don't know if you guys can see, let's just, here, we're going to blow this up. Okay, see, this is a half of this here. We'll put our little half inch legs on here. Okay, so we got the grain going this way, okay? So if, if there's something where, you know, you're not going to get a piece that the grain's going to be perfectly straight, hopefully over the years you'll you'll be able to visualize that. Mahogany's pretty straight for the, for the most part. That's why we use it, okay? There's going to be some times where the grain is, it's going to be a little funky or whatever, you know. So you could be turning this part off here, and when you hit here, that whole chunk is going to fly off, okay. You don't want to do that. So, you know, looking down on, on this, let's, let's make it big again. Okay, so we're going to look at this end okay so we're gonna like i said we're gonna blow this up okay so you say this is how you start off okay then you got your your center then there's our half inch pieces where we're gonna fit them over our our centers okay and it yeah they're gonna come in here like this okay so when you got this in the lathe you start turning right this thing's going to be spinning okay so when i do it the way i have always been taught you want to put as little material on a lathe as you can because i mean it, it it's spinning and i've seen stuff come off the lathe it hasn't happened to me yet knock on wood all right so one of the biggest things you do uh, plus right here the way the grain goes right it, it's just easier for when it's all the way out there for you to rip big pieces off okay so traditionally what we do when we're getting ready to start to turn in it what I do like when I made this piece here all right what I do and I'll show you this too probably not today but 
over the next week or two, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna get into a bunch of this stuff. Where this is a pretty big project, so we're gonna do a lot of work in there. So what I'll do is I'll I'll cut the sides off on a 45. All right, so instead of big square piece lonking around, okay, you got something that's not round but it's semi round, okay. And it's just it's just easier on your tools, easier on the lathe. Okay, you got lost less weight on there and that. Okay, um, so that, that that's the way I like to get started. Okay, that's kind of some basics, and we'll show you this as I, I go along. I, I promise I'll I'll uh, get show you this stuff, guys. Um, this particular piece, what I'll do, I'll just okay. When you do this too, okay. Uh, I'll just go over it real quick okay so what I do is we'll fasten these two pieces of wood together okay Let's just say these are them all right so I'll find my center okay then I'll take my compass or my compass my dividers right all right and then I find out obviously too okay see see we need to make this three inches in diameter okay it's got to be three inches all right so this is going to be, you want it a little bit bigger because you're going to be taking stock off if something's a little off, right? So I add a quarter of an inch per side, right? So it's three inches by three inches. So you make it three and a half, you know, from here to here, say three and a half. And then it'll be three and a half, you know, top to bottom, okay? So you're going to need a piece half a three and a half is inch and three quarters so you know from here to your centers inch and three quarter right inch and three quarter inch and three quarter all right then this piece down here is going to be three and a half okay all right so you're going to have two pieces inch and three quarter thick three and a half wide and then however long you need it okay all right, so we'll do that. So then what I do is I book them together. I, I try to lay out, you know, where, you know, if you can see this piece, like I said, I roughly, I roughly, you know, we got something coming in here like this, right? So I, I roughly figured out where the pattern's not gonna be, or this one, I think I did it where, yeah, right in the middle of where the pattern was, okay? Um, you know, where you the beefier part where you're not turning as much, right? So you find out where you got to screw. So I screw those in, okay? They're together. So what you do is you take your dividers at an uh, inch and three quarter radius, right? And then you just you swing an arc, okay? Get your circle as far as you can. Then what you do is you take your square, all right? Take combination square, and then you just you know hit tangent to the radius okay it's going to be the same on all four sides so you could just lay one out and then if you have a table saw you can take it over on the table saw i'll show you like i said table saw is not a big thing in the pattern shop it's nice if you have one but what i do i just do it on the bandsaw and i actually i don't i'll show you a little trick where that thing's a pain to get all the way down to 45 in that, so I'll show you a little trick. When we do the bigger cylinders in a couple days, I'll, I'll show you the trick on how to get that 45. But, you know, this is kind of like the basics. So what I'm going to do is um, i got to figure out a couple things on this, too. Like I said, I haven't done something this small, so i got to figure out where this is going to go center-wise on here. So let me do that. I'll screw this, and then... Um, We'll get to turn and make some sawdust, okay? Like I said, I don't know if I'll finish this project today, but if I don't, I'll, I'll take some pictures of, you know, what we, we um, finished up with. And then, two, like I said, hopefully we'll cast it. If I can cast it and this guy wants them, then we'll, like, make some permanent equipment and, uh, you know, get going on down the road. So I'm um, still not feeling all that great, so I don't know how I want to get you guys up to the foundry again. I don't know why I got a lot of stuff to do at the front I'm getting way behind. So one of them is, you know, this, you know, I'm going to have to try these things. I got some bronze stuff I got to do for painting, so we'll probably do that at the same time. Another little project I was working on, 
I'm gonna quit leaning over here. Um, a friend of mine is a physical therapist, and she she does the uh, little guys. Uh, just does um, just does the uh, kids. All right, for physical therapy. So one of the things she did was um, there was a company that made some. Um, little stirrups that mounted on to uh, tricycle pedals, right? So that company went out of business, so they don't know where to get them from anymore. And a lot of people are um, looking into where they could buy some. So we're gonna try to make some of those too, see how that goes. I made these up. We gotta cast these, these are prototypes. These will be a prototype, okay? So we're gonna cast some of these up, get them to, uh, my friend see if she can use them see if they're if they're acceptable from for her and then uh, you know it's a possibility down the road you know i'll show you how to make permanent equipment off of this and we'll do some castings with this stuff too so it's just all kinds of you know just get all kinds of different things in and you know that's what i love about this trade so much you know we, we do all different kinds of stuff so let me uh get this thing going i'll get you guys back in a little bit all right see you in a bit Okay guys, back. I got, uh, we're all set up in the lathe, ready to go, okay, and I, I'll show you this down the road, okay, and then I just want to try to get this thing going, I don't want to take too much time up. Um, another real quick, important thing that I forgot to tell you guys, okay, um, when I do something this small, in it, no matter what it is, I always just use mahogany, okay, it's just, like I said, it's real super straight, straight grain, um, it, it's just, it's way easier to turn, too, to, uh, mahogany's real nice to turn. Um, down the road, what you guys will you'll start learning. You know, it's funny when uh, I worked at Precision, there was eight. We had eight pattern makers there, right? And when we got a load of lumber in there, um, guys would go over and search through the mahogany pile, and you'll find, you know, you can't see it visually, but you'll get weight-wise, you know, the real heavy pieces of mahogany. The physics here again. Yeah, that's more dense, it's more compact. Um, we'll go over this down the road again. Uh, we got too much stuff going today. Another woodworking thing we'll do. Just really quick, when you look at the end of the log and you got the growth rings, I've explained those before. Okay, the closer those growth rings are together, the stronger that piece of wood is, okay? Generally, all right? So anyhow, yeah, that's where if you find a piece of mahogany that's real dense it's that's got to be like you know primo for turning all right so anyhow what i do is you know this piece like i said i'm gonna make it out of mahogany the other thing i'll do is uh and my micrometers out and i measured this okay i want this to be really close several reasons it's a new customer for what this is i want it close to okay you can use your uh dial calipers too okay use those to measure the inside dimensions okay so in doing that this is brass or bronze i'm not sure we're going to take it i got a buddy it's got a spectrometer we're going to find out exactly what the alloy i think it's brass but brass or bronze you use a 3 16th shrink rule okay so for me to you know get a pair of regular calipers okay get a regular pair of calipers you know, and get it down to, you know, on my shrink roll, within a few thousands, you'll get there, I'm halfway decent there, but I'll still go ahead, I'm gonna use my uh, mics or these, okay? So, obviously these don't have shrink in them, okay? So there's a way to alleviate that, and actually what I'll do is I'll try to uh, come up with a list, I got a few more of these dimensions too, okay? So if you don't have shrink rolls, um, a lot of times people say there's a, you know, uh, aluminum shrinks a certain percentage, um, you know, brass, uh, you know, shrinks per certain percentage. Way easier way, okay? So for 3 sixteenths of an inch shrink, okay, you multiply the dimension, okay, so the inside dimension, the true True dimension. Remember, you always castings you measure in standard. Okay, so the true inside dimension of that is 250 thousandths. Okay, so you take your 250 thousandths times 1.015, and I got 0.253. It's only three thousandths, but you know we'll see what we can do. It's 
probably not going to be that big of a deal, okay? So same thing with the outside dimension, it's 350 thousandths, okay? 350 thousandths times 1.015 is 355 thousandths, okay? You can see how it's getting, the numbers are getting bigger and, and these like kind of jump that much more. All right, so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get over on the lathe and we'll come close. We're not, you know, hit, with pattern making this, these things, you know, we try to like to get into 64th, okay, that's 16,000, sorry, so 15, 16,000. So uh, we should be able to get it close than that, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, and then, too, like I said, this is just like a to see if we can do it too. So I don't know how fussy I'll get today, but that's how you do it. I've got some more dimensions. I'll try to get them up. I'm still learning how to uh, uh, post all that kind of stuff and that too. And then all my stuff's handwritten too. So let's see if my daughter will, you know, type it up for me on a nice sheet and we'll take a picture of it or get it out there or something. So that's what you do for standard in the shrink instead of percentage, all right? So I'll get you guys set up both by the lathe. We'll do some turning, all right? Hang tight. Okay guys, we're over here at the lathe. Okay, I'm not gonna do, um, we'll do a lathe uh, chalk talk, we'll do a chalk talk on the lathe. Okay, I wanna show you everything. I'm just gonna show you something real quick here. Headstock, for the guys that don't know, headstock is where all the power comes from. This is a drive piece, I hope you can see it. This is tail stock that holds the back end. This is where I got my live center in, okay? This is my tool rest. Like I said, we'll go over this down the road and I'll show you how to set things up and that. I don't want to do a lay thing today, okay? I want to get this project done. Um, so, the other thing too, I will tell you, I'm going to do a little bit of turning right here. If you see me do something, you do not feel comfortable. Please don't do it. Like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, okay? So, you know, there's, I'm going to be getting close to moving things here like i said i'm comfortable with that because i've been doing it for a long time i suggest that you don't okay stay away from things until you get comfy doing things okay so i'm gonna get started on this and uh, just show you a little bit real quick and then what we'll do is um you know i'll show you kind of the finished product um one of the things to start out with though like i said what we got to do is we got to have that 355 the outside diameter for the pattern and then we gotta shrink it down for the core prints to 353. Alright, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna get this whole length minus I got, you probably can't see it, I got the screw in the middle. We're probably not gonna get there. So I'm gonna go either side of the screw, I'm gonna take it down to three, I'm gonna get it to 355 as close as I can. Alright, and then from there I'll turn the camera back on or, or slow it down or whatever and I'll show you you know how we get stuff from there okay so uh let's get her going like i said i'm not going to do a uh what you call i'm going to start out with my gouge we're going to um I'll, I'll go over all the tools and all this stuff this is a gouge this is a smaller one smaller piece here so all right get a pair of calipers to get uh, where we are a little bit rough so what I'm gonna do too is this tool rest can't get the whole side I've got different size ones but I'm just using this one for now so I'm gonna get this one side get it down to 355 we're gonna move it over here get that side to 355 and then we're gonna find out where the core prints are and then what I'm gonna do is I had that extra piece over there I'm gonna do those extra pieces and that's going to be just the 253 thousandths all the way across, okay? I'm just going to do that uh, separate, okay? And that'll be for our core prints, and then we'll, we'll glue them up. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, back in real quick. I, I want to get this down. I'm just going to use some calipers, okay? Uh, two types of calipers, spring calipers, okay? And these, just a transfer caliper. Um, there's another... Uh, 
term for them, and I can't remember it. I tried to look it up. I can't find it. So if anybody, you know, dropped me a note, I, I just, it popped out of my head. That kind of stuff has been happening a lot lately, too. I must be getting old here. So, all right, when you're first starting out using a lathe, okay, uh, like I said, I'm old and stupid. These, I can get more accurate. They're not going to spring open anymore because of this nut on the screw is going to hold it okay so these you know unless you get them locked really tight they can spring open but that can save you especially when you're new i'm going to use a parting tool right now okay and so what this is going to do it's going to put a groove in there and as i'm doing it i'm going to hold my calipers in there you'll see me do it okay and this is one of those things, do not do this if you don't feel comfortable, okay? I'm going to rest my arm up here, okay? These, if something gets stuck or grabs, they'll come apart and kind of just flop. These, if they grab, they'll come flying out and they'll hit you in uh, the snack lockers. I've heard it return, uh, referred to as, as one time. I've had that happen once and... 50 something years okay and that was, was in a hurry doing something real quick you know in that but especially when you're just first starting out do not use the spring calipers okay just use the nut the ones with the locking nut on the top okay please all right and like i said if you see me do something on here you feel uncomfortable don't do it okay so i'm going to get this down close and then uh, we'll get the verniers out in a little bit okay This tool rests down a little bit here too. So that's the thing, these are kind of you adjust everything, but it's kind of all by hand here. So once you adjust things too, make sure give it a spin, make sure you're not hitting something because I just move stuff, okay? Okay, another trick, you can hear that, what's called chattering, right? Like I said, I haven't done a split pattern this thin. So we're gonna kinda do it even, uh, slow and steady. All right, we're not racing here. Okay, so I'm chattering fairly bad and I don't, that's not a good thing. So what I'm gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna move this and do the other half, okay? So, when I was done with this half, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and move it now while there's still some beef down here, and I'm going to rough it out down here, and you know, that way, if I make it too small here, and I got a whole big chunk over here I'm trying to turn down, it might bust, okay? So while this still has got some beef on it, we'll try to turn this down, rough this down. What I'll probably do is I'll go ahead and rough it and then I'll probably go ahead and finish this side before I have to move it back and I'll come back and finish this side, okay? So that that's, uh, like I said, you got to think of what you're doing and, and um, you know, plan, plan for different, you know, scenarios of what, what's happening, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and move this down here and then we'll start here again. Like I said, right, we're going to clamp this. Give her a twist, make sure you're not hitting anything, especially it's bad enough if you hit the wood, but if you hit the tail stock or something, that, that you know, I could wreck your tail stock and stuff, okay? So.
Okay guys, what happened? Uh, I, you know, being as experienced as I should be, um, like I said, I haven't turned a split pattern, I don't think this long. I had the piece and there was a little too long. It's coming out fairly good, but what happened, it started flexing too much, so I, the piece started getting oval shaped, all right, we can't have that. So what I did was, I just cut it in half and uh, we're doing a smaller piece. The only thing is with this too, I personally don't have a small enough tool rest, so you overcome the adapt. Okay, so I got the work piece down to my over or my bigger dimension. Okay, stop at the bigger dimension first. It's outside at 355 thousandths of them, within a few thousandths of an inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this piece on my work piece, leave uh, about a quarter inch, three eighths for um, uh, corporate, right, and then another piece out here. We should be able to get it all off of this one piece i'm hoping uh, i think we'll i think we'll make it here so yeah i think we got plenty we got plenty of stock here so and that should do it okay and then like i said with this you know for these you use a pencil i mean a lot of guys you get it started make a better, better line all the way around Okay. All right, so I got my uh, tool rest cocked in here a little bit. So I'm going to do this side first, and then I'm going to try to cock it over and get it down to uh, the 255. That'll be the size of the um, core print. Okay. So what I'm going to do too here, I'm going to take my verniers, set it at say 270. It's supposed to be 253, I think it is 253. So to do 270. We'll set it there. Take my calipers. Okay, get it down. This will give me like a uh, not quite there, but it'll, it'll be there a little bit. Okay, and it's core print too. I wanted a thousand, a couple thousands bigger too. So um, the core is supposed to be two, two fifty three. We'll make the core print like two sixty, maybe something like that. That way we'll have a little little wiggle room in the mold. Okay. Okay guys, I shortened it up, that seemed to do the trick. Okay, I got this turned. One thing I gotta watch too, like I said, I'm not used to doing stuff way this small. So when I was taking this out, I took the tail stuck out and I'm doing it again. Um, I let this tooling was pulling, I almost broke it just from the weight of this. So stuff you gotta think about all the time, okay? I always gotta think about that stuff, all right? Keep stuff in your mind. So this will be uh, the, out, the pattern core prints in it. Um, I'm going to turn down the core stick. It's just going to be all one long piece and I'll show you how to put it together. Okay, be right back again. Okay guys, don't mean to scare you with this close up here, but I want to show you what I, I'm doing here. We're done on the lathe. Okay, so um, what this was here, okay, this was in two pieces. Okay, and then I just cut it with this little hand saw. 
okay, instead of band saw, because I was a little close in here for what I want to do, all right? So the next step is I made this layout, okay? And now I always tell you to make three, uh, the three sides. This, you don't need to, it's cylindrical, so we know, you know, and we know it's round and everything, all right? So we, we just need to do the one, okay? So you can see I got the dotted green lines. That'll be my core print, but I want to make the pattern first, okay? So the first thing I got to do, um, this piece will go right here, and all, all you got to do is just line it up, okay? But what I got to do is, before I do this, uh, what I got to do is, I got to fit this piece in here, okay? So if I just leave this piece here like it is, you know, it's going to be kind of hard for me to, to, to mark this and that, right? So what I'm just going to do is lay this piece on here like that, okay? And then I can, let me get a pencil. Um, you said you want to try to be as ambidextrous as you can, but I'm not that great writing. All right, so I just put a mark here, and then we'll put a mark over here. And then I'm going to try to, you know, cut a radius you know, that, that's got to go in there like that. I'm going to try to do something like that. Um, that doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Because, like I said, powder maker's best friend's Bondo. You know, we're, we're going to squish uh, some Bondo in there. So, here again, um, you know, something doing it that way, this pattern wouldn't last a long time. So, we're going to make one or two maybe three castings off of this particular pattern and then if it works and the customer likes it we'll use this pattern to make a mold and then we'll make you know how many ever we're going to put on a match plate out of plastic okay so this is basically just like a a, a master pattern okay so let me cut that i'll put you guys back up on the stand i'll cut that and i'll show you how it goes together and we'll go from there all right see you in a minute Okay guys, back again. Hey, I cut this off and um, there it is right there. Okay, so it fits actually pretty good. I think I'm just going to glue that. Okay, that, that's how you do it, okay? Okay guys, hey, I uh, didn't get the camera up to Joe's yesterday, so, um, you know, sorry about that. Didn't get a video out. We'll just extend this one a little bit longer, but this way uh, we'll be able to finish this job up here, okay? So I'm making this little Y, y tube, okay, and I put the original one away. I don't know why I did that. I don't want to lose this guy's stuff here. So here's here's the original, okay, and then there's the pattern, okay. These are core prints, okay. So I left off yesterday. I was starting to make a core stick. I was going to make a core stick, and then uh, show you how to do that and then pour plastic. However, I couldn't turn a thin enough split core stick, okay? So what I did was I went against what I usually say, and, and I, I have said that it's, uh, you know, usually it's easier to make a core stick and pour plastic, okay? In this case, I was wrong, okay? So what I did was um, the core's gotta be uh, 253, all right, so I just took a quarter inch round bit, okay, put it in the milling machine, got a block out. It, this is perfectly parallel though, okay, that, that's important. Um, we'll show you how to run the mill one day. We put slot blocks in there, push this up against her, okay, and I ran a slot, okay, down the whole length. And then what I did was, you know, this has got to be on an angle right there. We got to put that up there. So what I did was I just marked out 35 degrees on there okay I used my protractor put it on the edge of the table and then just milled in straight flipped it over this side milled it in okay so what I'm going to do next I'm going to divide this in half drop it in there and it's not a big deal just yet because I haven't cut these core prints to size yet so I don't know where I'm at so we're just going to cut this and I'll show you how to book these things together all right give me a minute and I'll uh, be back with you Okay guys, I'm back. Cut the core boxes in two halves, okay? So this is gonna be what's called a split core box, okay? So what I did, I, I split it in half, all right? So we gotta pin this, and it's gotta be pinned perfectly, you know, you don't want it off anyhow. So how you do that is, 
All right, I took a quarter inch end mill, okay? Just ran down the length of this, put that little bit of an angle on, all right? So it's a quarter inch, or it's an eighth inch deep, quarter inch wide. So I just took some quarter inch pins, okay? Set them in there, all right? Boom, oh, perfect. That thing's gonna be perfect, all right? So I went ahead and drilled uh, two quarter inch holes, and what the holes are gonna be for is for these dowel pins, okay? These are brass dowel pins. You can get them at Freeman. We'll put a link down on the bottom if I remind Joe to uh, do that. Okay, traditionally, like I said, we're doing this as a um, prototype slash, you know, we're just trying this thing out. Traditionally, I wouldn't use pins. Uh, the brass pins just use like a wood dowel rod, but I'm kind of, uh, you know, if, if it does go, we'll, we'll, you know, these will be in there nice. They'll last a long time. Wood dowels aren't going to last in there, okay? Um, and if we, you know, the guy doesn't like them, we're not going to do them for him or whatever, just I'll take those pins out. You know, they come in and out really, they're threaded, okay? Um, they come, you got to buy a special tool for them, okay? So um, again here too, see I have the holes on the different sides, okay? You don't want to do them on the same sides. This one's kind of obvious, but you know, a lot of times, you know, you want to put them off center of like a circle or, you know, you, you want them so that you can't, you know, put it on 90 degrees, okay? And it, 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 there are some instances where that, that, that happens, okay? So there's a little square peg. It's got some square uh, notches in there. Put that in there, okay? Now the thing with this is, and this is things you're gonna learn over, this has gotta be perfectly square. This thing's gotta go in, in really good, okay? So just keep on checking it. I mean, you can putz around with them after. All right, but just screw these in. All right, we'll get the uh, females in this side, and then, you know, you do females one side, males the other side. All right, and um, real easy, not too bad. Like I said, you can you can adjust them. I'll show you a little trick to doing that. So, sometimes I mean, it's, it's, it's hard, especially when you do big ones. There are real big ones of these, too. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, get to those one of these days when we do a bigger job. Okay, now we'll do the males. The male, it's a hole with a couple pins in there too. It's uh, slotted, okay. So get this thing going. Here, these are real nice dowels. They got um, steel ones in that. For the most part, we use the brass ones. Um, it, you know, steel ones usually go into what's called the hot boxes where they put them on, a, for the shell cores, they'll put them on a machine. Uh, you know, it's way higher production, so they'll use the steel. I mean, if you got steel ones hanging around, you know, use them or, or what. But if you're kind of new to the game or whatever, you want to get a little professional, we just use the brass ones. Okay, so I got them uh, both in. All right, put them together and, and see how it's not going together. All right, so put them tight. There, there you go. That That should be fairly loose because you don't want um, you don't want the core uh, guy that's making the cores he's got to be able to you know a lot of times what you can do is take the side and, and uh, you know smack the side a little bit and they, they kind of line each other up all right and, and this is like one word it's just you know so you want these to fly perfect right there okay and it, it's perfectly aligned still all right so what I'm going to do next is um I'm not where I'm gonna take a break. I gotta go do something else here. Um, later, what I'll do this, I'm gonna try to get down to the foundry Sunday to Cassie's. If I can bring the camera up there, I will. I guess, yeah, I'm feeling yeah, I'm still not feeling all that great. I don't know if I can lift the molds yet here. So, um, I just gotta have this ready for Sunday. So, I'm gonna uh, set this aside. I have to, I'm going to run this loose down there. I've got to cut the core prints to size on here and then kind of match it up in the core box. That's no big deal, okay? But I just figured I'd show you, you know, a lot of the basics on this one. It, it, it was a pretty cool little job there. So, um, like I said, hopefully we'll run it Sunday and, uh, you know, get your camera up there and we'll show you. If not, I'll, I'll get the finished product out for you somehow. Alright, so I'm going to take off guys, hopefully get the camera up to Joe today, 
and um, we'll see you around. All right, have a good one out there, everybody.